I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Our focus this week is the city of Joplin tying into the August primary election in Missouri because there's an issue on the ballot that Joplin voters will be deciding a use tax. And joining me today, we have three representatives to help explain and provide some information. We have Drew Kimball, Amber Duncan, and Leslie Hass. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank Glad you. Glad to be here. And I, Drew and Amber, you've been on the task force working with the citizen side of things. And Leslie, of course, you're from the city with the <coughs> finance side. Yes. So I think between the three of you, we can explain for the voters today you know, what we're talking about, what the issue is, and what you're asking them. And I guess the first question, and when somebody hears the word use tax, how do you explain that? Drew, can you explain what is a use tax? Yeah. So the use tax is um, here to recapture lost revenue. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is there's a tax on internet and out-of-state purchases. So if you're buying something online or if you're buying something, ordering something through a catalog, okay. then typically where there was not a sales tax, mm -hmm. there will now be a sales tax. And that money will then come back to the community that you live in. So for us, it would come back to Joplin and then impact the money that we have to work with as a city. So this is a Joplin specific issue on the ballot in August. Yes. So each so community has their own way of dealing with this and Joplin has decided we're going to put this on the ballot for our citizens to decide. It's been a while for the process for this to go through as far as I know, I remember the council looked at it, there was a group studying it. So can you explain a little bit how we got to this point? Right, so uh, earlier in the year, um, the city council started to look at it, it actually, came up through the Vision 2022 process. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the city was kind of looking at it behind the scenes. Um, Vision 2022 actually recommended placing this before the voters. Um, at the same time, the, the council appointed a, a citizens task force to look at um, whether we should place it on the ballot or not. The, the committee actually recommended to council to um, place it on the August ballot unanimously. Right. Um, and, and then council voted that way in May. And then the committee's been working um, on the education process um, and and we're kind of just kicking off the whole process to educate everyone. So you are people who will also be seeing you in the community for people who are watching they may see you at other presentations. Absolutely. Per per performing information providing. Uh, Joplin is a community voting on it now. Others have already voted on this issue? Some are running? Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, we've got Oh, now I just blanked. It, 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 uh, yeah, so some sorry. surrounding communities no. have passed mm -hmm. it recently. Web City, I, um, Duquesne passed it at the April election. Um, Web City passed it before that. So we do have some surrounding communities as well as across Missouri. Um, over half of the cities that have a population of over 2,000 have, have passed a use tax. Okay. All right. So this is something every city in the state of Missouri really needs to look at if they yes. want to deal with this issue that they're facing. Um, the people might be wondering, well, why is the tax not being collected now? You know, why has this kind of gone under the rug or how did this happen? Um, so. You know, that, that's really, it, it's, it's actually the result sort of of um, a Supreme Court ruling in the 90s, hmm. which actually said that in order to collect sales taxes um, from out-of-state vendors, those vendors had to have a presence in our, our state. Okay. And additionally, a use tax had to be in place and had to be voted on by, by the people. Mm -hmm. um, Recently, the Supreme Court has reversed that decision, actually just uh, last month. Right. Um, and now what they've said is they've, they've removed the physical presence requirement, which actually makes this, this issue even more important. Now what, what the rule is, is basically every business is supposed to collect this if they have a sale, um, supposed to collect it and remit it to the taxing jurisdictions. if as long as the use tax is in place. So in order to capitalize on the Supreme Court ruling, the use tax has to be in place by the municipalities. The state already has a use tax in place. Okay. And Missouri is a state where citizens have a say in taxing. You yes. have, I hear a number of issues come up for taxes. We've talked in the past on mm -hmm. other issues where voters have a say. Absolutely. In tying that together. So you've been involved in looking at the issue. Now you're at the point of trying to get the information out for people. Um, we have the aspect of information being provided. People are going to have a lot of questions. What are the first questions when you tell people, well, I'm working to get the word out in the community. What's the first type of question? That comes up for either one of you. Um, why do we need this? Mm -hmm. People, I, I think they feel really uncomfortable sometimes when we start talking about taxes. They hear the word tax and think, well, why and, do we need and, tax? And, you know, more of my money is going someplace else. So I think the first one is usually um, that, you mm -hmm. know, what, what is this or why do we need it? 
Okay. And of course, we can explain the impact, economic impact of basically it's money Joplin's not getting now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. But it, it even has a wider implication for our community. Um, you know, it, it is important to the city and important for us to continue to be able to provide services, but it also has a, um, an impact to the community. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about the use tax. So if I'm going to buy something out of state, I go online, and it's from an out of state purchase or going online. How do, Amber, how does this work then? From what, I, from what we understand, and from w the way we understand it at this time, um, is that uh, it's uh, based on your zip code. Oh, okay. So the 64801, 64023, Inside the city limits of Joplin. Inside the city limits mm -hmm. of Joplin. And it will be based on that. And then the 2.625, now it's going to be up to those retailers. Um, through their program, through their their uh, accounts receivable mm -hmm. payable programs, computer program that they use to know that that now that that zip code now has to collect this two point six two five percent on top of. So you're not calculating else. it as a buyer. You know, if I go on online, I don't have to think. Okay, what's the sales no, tax? It's going it to be done by you. the computer. It, it, yes, yes, it will be up to the, those companies to implement on their end to mm -hmm. make sure that it then comes to Joplin. Well, if we think about the massive online presence in our world today, there are a lot of companies out there that are going to be. <laughs> there are, unfortunately, um, you know, that we're not the first ones to be doing this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're probably these companies are probably getting these notifications, whether yes. it's monthly, quarterly, yearly. They're getting right. these notifications, these constant updates. Mm -hmm. You know, as all payment systems get. Right. So. So they're it adapting their system. Pretty easily so happen. Yes. Now, what if we buy something in the state of Missouri? Um, is that affected as well, or just out of state? Um, it wouldn't. It's mm -hmm. the local, they would be considered a local retailer. Okay. So you won't see any change if you're buying something in the state of Missouri or from your community locally mm -hmm. also. There will be no use tax applied to what it is that you're purchasing. Okay. So this is strictly that online, out of state type of presence that you're looking at and dealing with that. Um, so it's charged at the location basically of the person who's selling that. If somebody in Oklahoma or well, Texas or whatever is selling you a widget, you're going to pay tax on that widget Correct. for yeah. that purchase and what's happening and so forth. So how much, what are we talking about the rate? I mean, people always say, well, what, are, what is the tax rate when we're talking about city taxes? What's involved there? Uh, that is uh, 2.625 is what it will be. Okay. The no. sales tax rate. Now you say that number's got the 0.625. People are wondering, how does that break down as far as, you know, where does the money go? I know Joplin has some taxes for specific purposes. So mm -hmm. how do we... Right. You wanna so it does need to... Uh, the state requires mm -hmm. that it mirrors your local current sales tax. Okay. So whatever we receive right now, we're at... Should I read all of these? Sure. Okay, okay. so mm -hmm. the uh, general sales... Right now, the 2.625% is our current sales tax rate right. for the city of Joplin. Whether you buy something down the street at the local store? Or Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. And right now it is 1% of that goes to the, is a general sales tax. Um, half a percent is for public safety purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so fire, right. um, police, all of that. Half percent is a transportation. Uh, three eighths of a percent is, goes towards capital improvements. And then a quarter percent to parks and stormwater. Okay. So that's in theory doubling all of that income you say doubling, I guess you're not doubling if you're not purchasing as much right. in state as out of state. Right. But right. Mm -hmm. they, so yeah, that's how that will still break down. So if I buy a pair of shoes here and I pay the sales tax, right. that's how it's going to break down. Right. If I go online and buy a pair of shoes yes. from Utah, then that's how it's, it's still going to break down the same way. I'm still going to pay the 2.625 mm -hmm. and it's going to break down the same way. Okay. So Joplin so still is getting that money whether I buy it here or in Utah. So when the money comes back to the city, you break it up to even match those percentages for the right because that's what the voters have previously approved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I believe that that's why the state has written the legislation like they have. Um, the the rate has to mirror the state the the sales tax rate so that it's because the use tax is really replacing that that lost sales tax from out of state purchases. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those impact areas, you mentioned the voters approved, I know transportation and safety yeah. and so forth, those come up for like every 10 years or so the voters look at those. Right. So two of those have sunset dates, the capital improvements and the park stormwater. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to, to talk about, the, we talked about it has to mirror that rate. If by chance that one of those taxes would not get renewed, um, then the use tax, and, and we had the use tax in place, mm -hmm. then the use tax would also decrease by that same amount. Okay. So they always have to be the same, no mm -hmm. matter what is occurring on the sales tax side. And the ballot language actually um, mentions that. 
I, mean, I know you have a flyer that's going out throughout the city which has the ballot language and a lot of times when people read ballot language they, there's a lot on there they're wondering what's going on I know we can show that on the screen but uh, it says shall the city of Joplin impose the local use tax at the same rate as the local sales tax rate yes. so that's what you're saying yes mm -hmm. we're gonna match mm -hmm. yes there's not gonna be anything different and then the next language actually talks about it has to um, if its sales tax is repealed, reduced, or raised, yes. the local sales use tax will also be reduced, repealed, and so forth. Yes, yeah. so that's also just saying that it has to mirror the sales tax. That's what all of that language means. Okay, so you're good. Basically, you're, it sounds like you're evening the playing field in terms of taxation. That is correct. And tying of all that together. People might be wondering, how does this impact the local businesses? I mean, oh, we've heard that more and more people are buying online. Have you heard those stories through your work on the committee and working on the task force? And yeah, one really um, unfortunate story uh, is um, our local Radio Shack has closed recently, mm -hmm. and that place was locally owned and run for 50 mm -hmm. years. And they were able to you know whether all the trouble that that Radio Shack has had through the when years. When the national corporation changed, they were still there. Yes, and um, because so many people going to the internet to purchase things and not walk into their store, mm -hmm. they've now had to close down their close the, the doors to their store. Um, so I think that's one way that there's there is an impact that's unfortunate. That hopefully by implementing this and leveling the playing field, as they say, mm -hmm. that people would. Um, go back out and go into local businesses instead of just only buying online or a majority of it. So it kind of ties into shop local, support your it community. It does, absolutely, and that's what um, what I wanted to, to say about that is, is, you know, really think about downtown Joplin and really think about, you know, your 32nd Street corridor and even Range Line mm -hmm. and how many of those are actually mom and pop is actually, you know, just kind of the word to use, but, you know. People who live here own those stores, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And so, the, you know, they're the ones that are really feeling the effects of this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you see what, what they bring to downtown, what they bring to 32nd, what they bring to Range Line, and, and there's a lot of value to that. And if you lose them because, you know, of the Radio Shack type s situation, right. when you didn't, when you could have prevented that. Mm -hmm. So I think we should definitely... Look forward to. <laughs> so this is going to give them an opportunity to say, you know, you pay the same here whether you pay it, go online. That's more an even playing field. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a more even playing field, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, I use the analogy that if I I use the analogy about shoes, if I want to buy shoes, if I can, if some people, myself included, if I want to save five dollars, I might save. But if I find that I'm not going to be able to, I might as well just buy it while I'm there and have them take them with you that day. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Instead of waiting for shipment and uh -huh. so forth and tying that together. Now I know you have a presentation. You have papers in front of you that we can see that you're going to have PowerPoint presentations. But and one of those things you break down the examples of the cost. You know, yes. like you said, it's mm -hmm. going to cost you this much here and this much there. It's kind of matching the costs. Yep. And tying all of that together. So um, every purchase then, as far as whether I buy a ten dollar item or a fifty dollar or five hundred dollar item would be taxed. Yes, so every out-of-state purchase would would be taxed especially since the Supreme Court ruling. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another way that it just levels the playing field for our local merchants. And tying that together. So sales tax, how much, what are we talking in terms of m financial impact from the city? We've got these percentages breaking down but as the finance director people are like, how much more money will this help in the city of Joplin? Right, so the state of Missouri, because they have the use tax, they can look at zip codes and they estimate for the cities how much it will bring in. Mm -hmm. In 2015, they estimated for the city of Joplin it would be about $1.2 million. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in 2018, and we know that online sales continue to grow, so we know that that number is larger. And then you add on to it, because of the Supreme Court ruling, all of the businesses will now be collecting. We know that it's going to grow even more. Um, so. The $1.2 million is what we can verify, but you know we, we strongly believe that it will be more than that. And I know in your presentation you have a breakdown of that $1.2 million, and I'm looking yes. at your notes right now that you know, 456000 of that is just general revenue funds. Then. Th that is correct. Um, to provide the essential services that, that we provide to the community and the citizens. You know, it's police, fire, parks and recreation, streets, all of those things. That's where this money will continue to go especially given that this is really just replacing those lost sales tax dollars. Okay. And then we could show probably on the screen later also the uh, public safety, $228,000, transportation, $228,000, capital improvements, parks and stormwater. Does you see this as possibly, from the citizens' perspective, providing opportunities for more projects to be completed or so forth in the city? Absolutely. Um, with more funds going into those different budgeted items, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think 
we stand to gain a lot as a community of Joplin. I think the quality of life has a great opportunity to make it jump up when we implement this tax. So we're talking about parks and police protection, all those yes. things, getting additional uh -huh. funds and revenue and tying that together. Mm -hmm. And I know this is budget time for the city. You're yes. looking at with a microscope at what you have. Yes. So <laughs> Yes, we are. <laughs> so that's probably something that the city council obviously felt was important enough to put on the ballot that yes. you need to look at. Yes. And something else I would like to add to kind of jump back to the, the mom and pop mm -hmm. shop shops um, verbiage that I was using. Um, to look at this on a broader scale and on a bigger scale of what it could potentially bring to Joplin. Right. Um, so I'm in construction, I'm in the construction industry, mm -hmm. and so when we build a building, when we build the Joplin Public Library, for right. instance. So if there are certain um, certain things, you know, we always, as a local contractor, try to shop local. There's some things we just cannot get local. They don't so sell if we them have, here. Exactly, yeah. if we have to buy this specific product from Utah, mm -hmm. um, that's, what, that's what's required to come. So, right now, we don't pay any use tax. The, you know, no use tax would be paid. So, as that. the builder building that building, as a builder you're not building paying any taxes out of state. Not paying use tax out of state on it. So, moving forward, and this would go for any anybody, the ship, so it's for the ship to address, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. So, if that product is being shipped to a 64801, would be the library, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 64801, no matter who's building it, whether you're local or not, that sales tax, that use tax, then comes back to Joplin. Oh, okay. So to look at it on a broader scale, if you're looking at, and this is no joke, fifty, fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars worth of material or worth of a, a specific product, mm -hmm. I mean, two point six two five percent of what Joplin potentially and most likely did lose out on. I, I can't name anything specific on any specific project, right. but you know that money was lost. And so in moving forward and even building projects and everything like that, that's even more money on a broader scale, on a grander scale than a pair of shoes so that Joplin could be. So this is impacting kind of economic development and growth Absolutely. as you're building new buildings and putting Absolutely. things in around town. Those yes. buildings are going to mm -hmm. come back and continue to help the city yes. and tying that together. That's an aspect people may not realize. I think person, right. individual persons, but companies that are involved right. in con purchasing. If you're a manufacturer and you have to buy your parts out of state or something, mm -hmm. that would be the same mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and tying that together. So uh, putting all that. What about people, you know, as far as... Uh, Online, I know that's increased, like you say, a huge in impact, and that's and seeing that as a trend that will continue. Then probably that it's something people aren't going to stop buying online, right? So, but mm -hmm. you're still going to have this opportunity to get that revenue for the city. Um, looking at some of the questions that people have, they say, well, some of the businesses I think I pay sales tax for. Like if you go to Amazon, there's a little thing that pops up and say you're paying tax. What happens there? <laughs> right. So they actually are paying the use tax to the state. Okay. So Amazon came out in January or February and actually announced that they were going to voluntarily collect the use tax mm -hmm. for any municipality that had the use tax in place and for the state because they had the use tax in place. This of course was before the Supreme Pretty Court perfect. ruling. Mm -hmm. Now, so they voluntarily did that. Not all businesses did that. Now, all of the businesses, if the use tax is in place, will have to collect that. Okay. So they're doing it because they knew that their places already had the tax in yes. place and working together. Yes. So is Joplin kind of leading the way as far as trying to get this on the ballot and get it in place? Or no, do I don't think we're leading the way. I think we're just kind of middle of the road really at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to see more communities and the, they're showing on the screen right now kind of a little bit of your uh, PowerPoint and your presentation that uh, is going to be on. So uh, people in Joplin, are you're educating them, getting them to know about this. Uh, there's always the person who's going to say, I don't have to ha want to have to pay extra for something. <laughs> and that's, How do you deal uh, with that? And yeah. that's the biggest thing that I think the, the word we're trying to get across is that there is a difference. We're not adding more to your taxes. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to generate more from other from other sources that we were not able to collect before. So, yeah. and that's the important thing is different showing them the difference mm -hmm. between you know, what you're already paying and what you're going to pay. This is not a tax increase per Correct. se, like right. you, if you were to say we're going to add a tax for a certain purpose in the community right. and, and tying that together. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you're going to be able to help educate the community or go out and share information, you know, to get this word out. Well, I and a couple of other people will be at City Council um, this coming Monday mm -hmm. to chat about that. Um, I'll also be going to a couple of Rotary meetings to engage those citizens there about the use tax, answer questions they may have, concerns, things of that nature. Right. And there are other people on our committee that will be going out and engaging in other ways as well. Yeah, I would really say that the city and the use tax committee are really taking a grassroots effort on this. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging the committee members to talk to their coffee groups, um, to any group that wants to hear about this issue. You know, the, the citizens committee will go talk to them. 
we're educating employees, our friends, our acquaintances. Um, it, it's not as much about how somebody votes, but what we're hoping is that when people go to the to the ballot that they understand this issue. Mm -hmm. Now, August is a primary election where you have to declare parties when you walk in. How does this affect the ballot? You know, somebody comes in and says, where's this use tax going to be? <laughs> so actually, our issue is Proposition A. Mm -hmm. um, there also is a State of Missouri Proposition A um, on both, on all of the ballots. Whether you choose Republican, exactly. Democrat, whatever party. Mm -hmm. um, the City of Joplin Proposition A is the last item on the ballot. So if, if people don't remember anything else, that's what we would ask them to remember. City mm -hmm. of Joplin is the last item on there, um, and it's about the use tax. Okay. So I, no matter which party I pick up, I'm going to see that on my ballot. Yes. I'm tying that. And of course, we're talking about Joplin registered voters. You have to be a registered voter in the City mm -hmm. of Joplin. And primary elections traditionally don't have a huge turnout of voters. Uh, but this year might be different. You know, you never know what the <laughs> politics going on. Yes, there's a lot of politics. So it's, it's hard to say, plus the, the state issue. So. Mm -hmm. So you might have, you know, it's hard to tell in the turnout that you're going to have yes. and tying that together. So registered voters, uh, we're recording this program mid-July. You can start voting absentee now. If somebody says, I'm not going to be here in August, I'm going to be on vacation. Yes. yes, I think that has already started at the county. So the process of voting, same as any other, you know, election, going through and, and putting the ballot, uh, get the ballot, go put that information out for people and tying that together. Well, since you've been involved in the discussions and planning and getting the word out, a uh, wide variety of people on your committee. I mean, you're representing businesses and, you know, that is let you talk about the grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. So we do have a number of local business owners um, and, and um, it's, it's pretty diverse. It is. Mm -hmm. Council members, right. yeah. um, Thank you. bankers. Yeah. bankers yeah. Um, you know, we tried to hit the major employer, so mm -hmm. the hospital. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really good group. And the group was appointed by the council? It was. Okay, so you were members appointed by the council to mm -hmm. serve on the committee and get the word out there. And the grassroots, as far as you talk to your friends, you talk to your acquaintances, mm -hmm. people that say, you know, hey, have you heard about this? And mm -hmm. Are you finding many people who say, I haven't heard about that yet. What's it mean? I, I have not encountered that okay. too much. Um, I think that it's, it's been around. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of been around in a low-key way for right. a bit. Um, so a lot of people have fairly basic questions about it. But I, I haven't encountered anybody that has any really deep questions yet. Mm -hmm. But so far, people know. And if they're not for it, they're at least open to learning more to gather in my right. and experience. It, yeah. And Amber, dealing with other people in business, we might about construction and other trades. Mm -hmm. so as far as the bigger companies, mm -hmm. you're getting questions from people who own these big companies who say, well, now I'm going to be paying more tax. I have not as of yet. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> so I'm, I have not yet had mm -hmm. too many conversations about it besides within my office and, right. and you know, making sure they're all aware of it. So. But by your connections with other large businesses, you can help spread the word and no, get absolutely. those questions answered. Yes. Somebody who's watching today and says, well, I need more information, how do they gather that? You know, they can, are you welcome to give, give you a call, give the city a call? How do they find out? Yes, so they can call our public information officer, Lynn Onstott, mm -hmm. at the city or email her. Um, so, and then she will be glad to um, get the information, or if they want us to come talk to them, then she'll set that up. Great. We will also have a booth, I believe, at Third Thursday. Yes. Coming up uh, later in July. Coming up, mm -hmm. yeah, in July, where if you have questions, we'll have information and multiple people there that you can engage, chat with, and mm -hmm. educate yourself a little bit more on that. You feel the that's the best way to get the word out is one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people? I think conversations are great for people to have. It's, you know, your walls are down, and, and you have the ability to really connect with someone. It, it mm -hmm. seems like a very effective way to do it. Yeah. Now, if the use tax passes in August, what's the timetable for implementing this? Right, so if we um, get the information, the required information to the state, um, I think by August 16th, then it would actually go into effect on October 1st. Okay. If it's after that date, then it would be January 1st. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we would be shooting for that October 1st deadline. Right. Which would have an impact on your next fiscal year for the city, which comes yes, in shortly would. after that, correct? <laughs> yes, as well as... Um, you know, the the holiday season. Mm -hmm. so For the holiday shopping yes, season, we'd right, be yes. gathering those taxes yes. and tying that in. So so people knowing the timeliness, that's quick turnaround for you yes. to get that information needed. Yes, <laughs> but we, we will be ready. Mm -hmm. Now, will the money, as I guess in layman's terms, funnel through the state and then back to you? They do. They, so it works just like the sales tax. Um, all the money goes to the state. They send it to the 
to the city. Okay. So it's not like every ABC company is going right. to be sending a city Joplin check. That's right. <laughs> so from the bookkeeping side, for those of us who don't do bookkeeping, kind <laughs> yes. of, how are we going to actually get the cash into the city? <laughs> yes. So, forth. so like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, I know it's budget time for the city. Yeah. So as you're planning next year's budget, this is probably in the back of your mind a question yes. of where are we going to stand on this? It is. And actually, we will already have the proposed budget printed before the election. Mm -hmm. We still then have time before the adopted budget to make any adjustments. And so we'll, we'll anxiously be awaiting the results of the election. And what's the timetable for that to actually have be approved by the council for the budget? Right. So we present the proposed budget at the second meeting in August. Mm -hmm. And then the council will hold work sessions in September. And then we need to adopt it in October before the fiscal year starts on November 1st. Okay, so things will be happening pretty quickly yes. in the fall, <laughs> yes. tying all that together. Yes. So between now and then August 7th, like I said earlier, your committee is available, representatives from the task force to come out and visit and talk. Absolutely. If you were to walk to, out of the studio and someone comes up to you and they haven't received this brochure, which you know has the basic information, but they say, um, you know, give me one really good reason that I should vote for this. What would you say to that person, each of you? Um, I think that capturing lost dollars that we haven't brought into the community to create a better quality of life, a safer community, is is the reason that they should vote on this. Vote yes. Vote yes on, on that decision. So yes. yes, no question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, okay. And Amber, what about your response? If someone says, well, why should I support this? He, he absolutely, I mean, I'm sure you get this a lot, but he mm -hmm. absolutely said exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, just to, to bring in more revenue into the city to improve it in any way that we possibly can, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you? So absolutely vote yes. Right. Okay, so we have people who are helping spread the word. The city is there to answer the questions on those dollars and cents and the yes. figures along those lines. So yes. we have a kind of a team effort on getting the word out. And as I mentioned, this will be, uh, if it's not already in people's mailboxes, so it will be coming out that they can see and basic information about what's involved in helping educate and what's happening. So mm -hmm. well, I'd like to thank the three of you for visiting us today and remind thank people you. it's August 7th. The poll is about 7 a.m. to 7 or 6 to 7 or 6 I, to 7. 6 I to 7. Think. So yes. they go early <laughs> throughout the day. Yes. And they should know their polling places throughout the city if yes. they've lived here before but if not I know they can call the county courthouse yes. imagine the city could also help direct them to where yes. they're voting if they haven't done that in the region as well yeah. mm -hmm. great well thank you very much for being here today thank you for thank having you. us so much. Thank you very much and I'd like to thank you the voters and the viewers for joining us today on newsmakers I'm Judy Stiles I hope to see you again next week at the same time on the station we'll see you then